In this example, we're going to check out a related rates problem. So, first thing we'll do is read the problem. A street light is mounted at the top of a 15-foot pole. A man six feet tall walks away from the pole with a speed of five feet per second along a straight path. How fast is the tip of his shadow moving when he is 40 feet from the pole? So first and foremost, we read this problem and we say to ourselves, how can we recognize this as a related rates problem? So first thing that I notice is that we have been given a rate in the problem and we're posed the question, how fast? How fast is usually inquiring about another rate? So given a rate, we're asked to relate it to another rate. Now, something that I find very beneficial in these sorts of problems is to come up with a picture of what's going on as well. So here is a street light at the top of a pole. The pole is 15 feet tall. That quantity does not change. Then somewhere over here we're going to see a man with a very large head and a very long spine and stumpy little legs because I am not a very talented artist. Now light is going to shine directly toward this man and as it hits the man it will cast a shadow onto the ground. So we have been posed the question, how fast is the tip of the shadow moving at a certain point? Now, here are some things that we know. The man is moving in this direction at a rate of five feet per second. So with that in mind, I think it's going to be important to define one of our variables to be this distance right here. This distance right here, I'm going to refer to as M to describe the position of the man. So let m be equal to uh, distance from pole to man. Another quantity that we should probably define is going to be the distance from the pole to the tip of the shadow. We'll use t for the tip of the shadow. No, because we're going to be differentiating with respect to t. Definitely never ever use t. We'll use s for shadow. So let s be the distance from the pole to the end of the shadow. Now what we're looking to do in this problem is try to relate these variables together. We also know something that doesn't change is that the man is six feet tall. Now, what I'm seeing here is it appears as though we have a couple of similar triangles. So, oh, sorry, this is the D step of drips. So, D, define the variables that you need. Now, ultimately, the quantity that we're going to be trying to find, we're going to try to find ds dt. That is the speed of the tip of the shadow relative to an unmoving object. And I think that the unmoving part is going to be especially important. Now to relate the variables together, we are going to use similar triangles. So we have two different right triangles that are present in this problem. Starting from this vertex down here, we can do a hypotenuse up to the pole and then down to the ground and then right back. Or we can do a hypotenuse to the top of the man's head, back down to the ground and then over here. Regardless. If you wanted to say uh, similar triangles, that's fine. But the other thing that we could do is use trigonometry and analyze the tangent of this angle. We could do the opposite over the hypotenuse, or excuse me, the opposite over the adjacent for the big triangle, or the opposite over the adjacent for the smaller triangle. So analyzing the opposite over the adjacent for the larger triangle is going to give us the 15 foot tall pole divided by the S for the shadow. This is going to be equal to the opposite side for the smaller triangle, which is our six foot man, divided by uh, this distance right here. Now, we haven't formally defined this distance, but I noticed that if we take S and we subtract M, we would have the distance that we want. So S minus M. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and differentiate this thing right now, no penalty whatsoever. However, we're going to be using some quotient rule in here, and that just sounds awful. So what I'd like to do instead is to perform a cross multiplication. Product of the means equals product to the extremes. So we'll say that 15 times s minus m is going to be equal to 6s. And continuing to manipulate this, this will be 15s minus 15m is equal to 6s. 
And if I subtract 6s and add 15m to both sides, I will get 9s is equal to 15m. Now, I'm about out of space here, so I'm going to take this relationship and... You know what, this seems horribly, horribly irresponsible, but I'm going for it anyway. Oh yeah, can never reuse this. Just to remind us of where this came from. So 9s is equal to 15m. At this point, we are ready to move on to the I step of DRIPS, which is to implicitly differentiate with respect to time. So we're going to differentiate with respect to time, 9s, and we're going to differentiate with respect to time, 15m. Now both of these are simply linear terms, but they do both vary over the course of time, so we'll call this 9 times ds dt is equal to uh, 15 times dm dt. Now recalling what these actually represent, ds dt is the speed of the shadow and that's what we're trying to find. That means that we should have a quantity that we can plug in for here. So this represents the rate of change of the position of the man with respect to time. So we'll point out the man was walking at uh, 5 feet per second. So let's go ahead and plug in 5. So this will be 9 times ds over dt is equal to 15 times 5. Dividing both sides by 9 and then uh, reducing the fraction as much as possible. This would be 75 divided by 9, which reduces to 25 over 3, and that'll be feet per second. Or we could say that's approximately, if we wanted to round to the nearest second decimal place, about 8.33 feet per second. Now here is something super important. At what point did we use the fact that the man was 40 feet away from the pole? The answer is we didn't. What this means is that regardless of the man's position, the tip of the shadow is going to be moving at the same speed. And that same speed is uh, uh, what, 5 thirds times what his uh, original walking speed was. By an amazing coincidence, if you take a look at um, the ratio of the distance between the top of his head and uh, the top of the pole, that ratio would also be 5 thirds. So, most likely those two quantities are related to each other, but that's a story for another time.